After watching this video, you should be able to identify bundle branch blocks from a 12 lead EKG and distinguish between a right bundle branch block and a left bundle branch block. Now remember, the left and right ventricles, they depolarize together very rapidly, less than 100 milliseconds. And when you have these bundle branch blocks, you create an asynchrony of ventricular depolarization, which therefore prolongs the QRS interval. And when we have complete bundle branch blocks, this is greater than or equal to 0.12 seconds. Let's review the frontal plane, and we see that we have our six extremity leads. I'm just going to focus on leads 1 and AVL. Their positive poles are over on the left, and their negative poles are over on the right. And they're two of the six key leads we're going to look at. And here is the transverse plane. Again, we're going to focus on just the key leads. V1 and V2 are our rightward anterior leads with their positive poles. And the V5 and V6 are our leftward somewhat posterior leads with their positive poles over there. Now let's review the ventricular depolarization process that we use to generate a QRS vector cardiogram loop. And first, let's start with the main vectors. Vector number one is the interventricular septal forces, which are generated in the rightward anterior, and we have here inferior direction, although they can be superior as well. And this spread of depolarization in this direction is coming from little arborizations from the left bundle branch. Once we get over the ventricular free wall, we have the left and right ventricles. And the left ventricle is left posterior, and we have written here inferior, although there's some variability. And the right ventricle is right anterior, and we have here superior. Remember, the left ventricle is much bigger than the right ventricle, so a left ventricle free wall forces dominate the ventricular free wall forces overall. And when we're thinking about what the leads are going to look like for the QRS complex, we recall that in leads 1, AVL, V5, V6, we see a small septal Q wave that's oriented in the rightward, anterior, and inferior direction away from those positive poles of those leads, and a dominant R wave representing the LV free wall forces towards their positive pole. In V1 and V2, we see a small septal R wave, which is again generated by the right anterior forces towards the positive poles of V1 and V2, and the dominant S wave that's going towards the left posterior direction away from the positive poles of leads V1 and V2. All right, now let's compare normal in these key leads to the right bundle branch block and the left bundle branch block. So we're going to draw again the QRS complex, but we're also going to add in the P wave, the PR segment, the ST segment, and the T wave. So we're going to draw the whole thing. So in V1 and V2, the P wave is actually diphasic because of the way the P wave vector cardiogram loop is oriented. And then there's our QRS complex, our ST segment. And then I'm going to draw the T wave here as upside down inverted T, although it can be upright as well. And so let's label the waves. We have the P wave here. Remember, it's, it's diphasic. We have a septal R, dominant S. Our ST segment is isoelectric. And then there's our T wave, which I happen to draw here as concordant with the QRS complex. But it certainly can be discordant. And that would be normal in leads V1 and V2. Now let's take a look at leads 1, AVL, V5, and V6. So here we're going to draw our P wave as a positive upright P wave. We're going to put in our PR segment. And then we have a small Q dominant R for our QRS complex. Our ST segment's isoelectric. And then I have a upright T wave. So we can go and label all the waveforms. We have the P wave right here, where our QRS complex would be small Q, big R. Our ST segment's isoelectric. And here's our upright T wave. And we have shown here T wave QRS complex concordance. Now let's take a look at the right bundle branch block first. And when we're drawing this out, there's nothing that should be the matter with the P wave. So that's going to be normal. I'm going to put in my PR segment. That's fine. And since my left bundle branch is OK, I should have normal septal forces I should start to see my LV free wall forces. But now what's happening, because of the asynchrony, 
I'm having a delay in the right ventricle forces, which are now going to be represented as an additional wave. And then we see the ST segment and T wave are drawn in as well. So when we label everything, we can put in our P wave. We have the, there's the PR segment. There's a small septal R. There's an S from the LV free wall forces. And then I have an R prime from the rightward anterior vector forces towards the positive poles of V1 and V2. There's my T wave. So notice that the ST segment is depressed. It's not isoelectric. And the T wave is inverted. And these are referred to as secondary ST segment T wave changes. And that's characteristic of what we would see in V1 and V2 for the right bundle branch block. Now there's also variations on this theme that can be sometimes confusing. So the QRS complex with a right bundle branch block in V1 and V2 can look like this. So we have our small septal R wave, but then the S wave doesn't really show itself. The LV free wall forces don't go down past the isoelectric line. And then we have our right ventricle free wall forces shown. And this would be an RR prime QRS complex rather than an RSR prime. So that's something also that you can see with the right bundle branch block in V1 and V2. Now let's take a look at the right bundle branch block in 1AVL, V5, V6. So there's my P wave, which would be normal. My PR segment would be normal. I have my septal Q wave which is going to be normal. That's coming off the left bundle branch. My R wave from the LV free wall forces. And then look, I have an abnormal third deflection here. That's a broad S wave from the RV depolarization. And then I have my ST segment and T wave. So if I go and label this, I have my P wave. I have my small Q dominant R. And then the abnormal part is highlighted here. This is the broad S wave from the right ventricle free wall forces. And then there's my T wave. And notice that the ST segment here is slightly elevated. So we can write that in, ST segment elevation. And there's an upright T here. So these are also considered secondary ST segment T wave abnormalities that are from the bundle branch block. OK, so now let's take a look finally at the left bundle branch block. And we're going to start to draw in the tracings here. So we're going to put in our diaphasic P wave, which would be normal. We have our PR segment, which would be normal. And now highlighted here is the abnormality of the QRS complex. And notice that I did not draw in the septal forces that are normally spreading in the rightward anterior and inferior orientation that are coming off branches of the left bundle branch. They're absent here. And then I have a prolongation of the LV free wall forces. So if I were to label this, this would be my P wave here, which would just be normal, what I would see in V1 or V2. And then this is a dominant negative deflection, and it's called a QS and a T wave. And notice that the ST segment here is elevated to go along with the upright T wave. And these would be the secondary ST segment T wave abnormalities that you would see with the left bundle branch block in leads V1 and V2. So like we did before, there's also some variations on this that can sometimes be confusing. So what we can get in leads V1 and V2 for a left bundle branch block is we can lose the septal forces, but we can get some notching on the QS complex. Now let's take a look at leads 1 AVL, V5, and V6. So there's our P wave, which is upright, normal, the PR segment. And now we can put in the QRS complex here, ST segment, and the T wave. So we can go and label this. So we have the P wave. The QRS complex here would just be called a big R. Then I have my T wave. And then you see my ST segment is depressed. And that goes along with an inverted T wave. And these would be the secondary ST segment T wave abnormalities that you see with the left bundle branch block in 1 AVL V5 V6. So notice what we have here is an absence of septal forces again with a prolongation of the LV free wall forces. Now we also can have some variations. And so what we could get is some notching on the R wave that can occur as well. And you sometimes can see this. So it shouldn't be difficult to distinguish between the right and left bundle branch blocks in leads V1, V2, 1 AVL, V5, V6. Remember, for the right bundle branch block, the key abnormality is this abnormal 
extra wave at the end that represents right ventricle depolarization that's being unmasked where normally is occurring at the same time as the LV depolarization and then for the left bundle branch block we lose our septal forces and have a prolonged LV free wall forces and that concludes this video on bundle branch blocks